Good morning, coding friends. Hope you're having a great day. We're going to do a little tips and tricks on lesson 14 conditionals. So conditionals is where we actually start to get to create things and start to make things happen in our coding journey here with code.org. So let's go ahead and jump in and get started. We're starting with booleans. This is kind of the kind of the base of where we start with conditionals. This is what it all boils down to is what I should, stay, should say. So a Boolean expression is an expression that can only evaluate to either true or false. So it says read the code below. Okay, there's some new symbols. So let's go ahead and look at that. And then you have True, false, true, 0, 200, 100, true, error, true, false, true, and that is all of them. All right, so we can see that we created variable here, sprite 1 and sprite 2. Sprite 1 was created at 100, 200, and sprite 2 was created at 300, 200. And then it says predict what each command will print. Well, that would print down in the console log here, okay? So if we look at this, console log, sprite one, well, here's my sprite one, dot y, well, here's my y, is equal to, we got the double equal signs, that means equal to, sprite two dot y. Well, if I look at sprite two and sprite one, I can see they're both 200. So that would, become true. So we would see the word true pop up. Next one, sprite1.x, sprite1.x, that is our greater than sign. So sprite1 is greater than sprite2. Is that true? No, that's false. So that would be false. So we got a true and we got a false. I'll let you do the last one, okay? And we can see that's a less than sign. So you go ahead and guess what's going to happen. Moving on, I definitely encourage you to watch the videos. These videos are really well done. So while you're watching it, answer these questions. What is a Boolean expression? What's an expression that would evaluate to true? And what's an expression that would evaluate to false? So as you watch that, go ahead and answer those questions. All right. Now we get to do a little bit of matching here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to drag and place these where they belong. So we're just going to read the statement and see which of these matches. So this is in words, and this is kind of uh, an expression. All right, so is the dog's sprite rotation less than the cat's sprite rotation. So if I read this, this is dog.x is less than cat.x. Well, that, that doesn't have to do with rotation. So if I come over here, I see dog.rotation, dog's rotation less than, less than cat's rotation. Ah, oh, that would go just like that. Then I go and do the next one. Is the dog sprite X less than the cat sprite X? Oh, that was the one I did before. Dogs X less than, so I dropped that there. And then we have, is the dog's sprite scale greater? Now I'm looking for a sprite scale and greater sign than the cat scale. So I'll let you go ahead and keep dragging those into place. You guys got this. A bunch of rock stars out there. All right. This one's just telling us we're going to use this for several things. So I'm going to hit run. We can see the car driving and you see the word false down here. When it crosses the finish line, it becomes true. Nice. All right, I'm going to version history so we can do this together. Start over. Ah, taking forever, isn't it? Here we go. Let's pull this down where I can read it. 
OK, the program draws a race car and a finish line. We saw that. We're going to figure out when the race car crosses the finish line. The sprites have all been set up for you. So if we look down in here, I can see my finish line and I can see my race car. OK, so we got those. And they even have given us our draw sprite. So it says add a console.log statement inside the draw loop. Well, here's my draw loop. And it says add a console log. So I'm just going to take and drop it in. It doesn't really matter where. I'm just putting it right there for now. OK. Now it says add a Boolean expression inside the console log that asks, is the X position of the race car less than the X position of the finish line? So let's just write out that expression. So inside where it says message, we're going to do math. And it said less than. Now if you forget, I can always hover over these, right? And it'll tell me less than or greater than. So we got the less than inside the console log. All right, so now I've got the less than. What did it say? It said, is the X position of the race car. OK, and I grab that sprite dot X in the first one, and that is race. Now, notice they do a capital C on car. OK, so we got to get that camel case in there. So. Is the X position of the race car less than the X position of the finish line? Race car dot X, I need finish line dot X. And if I look, same thing, camel case. There we go. I'm going to hit run and see what happens. I see the word false. It worked. Let's just make sure we did everything they wanted. Look at the output of the program as the car moves. When does the output change and why? Ooh, that's a good question. When did that change? When this expression became true. Okay, it changed when this became true. When our race cars thought X was less than the finish line, that changed. All right, moving on to five. Remember, you can always hit that finish button. I just click the levels up above for some reason. <laughs> All right, so this is another little um, prediction, OK? It says, if statement, Boolean expressions allow us to ask questions, but in order to use these questions to change the program's behavior, we need an if statement, OK? Read the code for the race car program. What will the program do when the car reaches the finish line? Why is the if statement inside the draw loop? Oh, that's a good question. So here's this. I can see, I see the word winner. What's going to pop up in the console log? I'm going to let you do this one. I don't want to spoil it. Then we have another video, and this video is really good. This tells us a lot more about conditionals. Okay, question you should be asking yourself as you watch it. When would you want to use an if statement? Okay, moving on, changing our fruit. We got this apple, and when it gets so big, it's going to change into a pear. Watch this. There it goes. Nice. All right, we're going to version history this. We're going to go down to start over. All right, it says, now that you know how to use if statements, you can do more than just check if the apple has reached a scale of two. You turn it into a pair once it happens. And you guys watch that. So use a conditional in the draw loop to check whether fruit.scale is greater than two. If it is, change the fruit's animation. So here we go. We need to do an if. And it said, 
if the fruit scale is greater than, less than, greater than, nice. I need to go to Sprite for fruit scale. Remember the name of our Sprite is fruit. And they said greater than two. And if that happens, we just want to change this animation. So it's not Sprite, it's fruit. And it is going to look like a pear. Let's try that. There it goes, it's growing. Nice work, guys. Moving on to eight. All right, eight's got quite a few things. The Boolean expression, this one's a lot of fun, but it kind of makes you do a lot of thinking. On this one, we're going to hit run. The big thing is down here in this comparison, okay? We got the first one's true, second one's true. Yours all say false, okay? So we got to make everything evaluate to true. It says you can modify the value of the sprite properties so that each of the Boolean expressions evaluates to true. So here we go. What we're doing is we're looking at the properties. Remember our X, Y, those are properties. Rotation is a property and scale is a property. So when we look at our code, the first one says, now I've changed this, but it says sprite2.x is equal to sprite2.y. Let's look at that. Now I've changed mine so they're both 200. So those are equal now. I don't think that's how it was when I started. But I'm going to let you go through and work on that. The one I really want you to do is look at this alien celebration. This one is a blast. We got this little alien. And when the spaceship gets so high, he starts dancing. Or in my thought, maybe he's running because they left him. So kind of your choice on what you think's happening. But let's work this one together. All right, so here we go. If we look at it, it says, make the alien dance when the spaceship reaches top of the screen. Run the program. There he goes. Nothing happens. But if I look in the animations, I got this animation called alien dance. Okay, and then we just have alien standing, our spaceship, and our background. So we're going to jump over here. We always want to do this in the draw loop because that's what makes the motion happen, right? So we're in there. And it says add a conditional. So we're going to add an if statement. And we're checking to see if the spaceship's Y gets up so high, okay? So if I'm going up, you notice that that Y is getting smaller. So we want less than, not greater than. I see a lot of people grab the greater than for this one because we're just thinking, oh, it's going in the sky, it's getting larger, but it really isn't. In code.org, as we go up, our numbers are getting smaller. So now I'm going to grab sprite.y, and we're looking at the spaceship. I'm just going to copy this over. If I just clicked in there, hit Control-C, and then Control-V. Now, I want to pick a spot. I'm going to say when it gets up to about two, uh, that's, when it gets up to about 100. I want my animation of my little alien. There's my alien. I want him to change what he looks like and go to that alien dancing. I'm going to hit run. The spaceship's going, ah, there he goes. And then if I don't like that, I could change this to a 50. So it lets the spaceship get a little higher before he dances. Oh, I like that. Looks good. All right, here's the thing. You're going to do the exact same thing on this one. I'm not going to do this one for you, but the dinosaur needs to turn into a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Okay? So our Tyrannosaurus is going to turn into a Pterodactyl. So it's the same thing. We're changing our animation. The exact same thing. Look at what we did on the last one and do it on this one. You guys can do that. Now, this final one. This is kind of cool. This is where you learn how to make sprites visible and invisible. And I will tell you, this is the one place you learn how to do this. And you're going to see this pop up quite a few more times. So I would work this one so that you know how this works. 
All right. I hope you guys had a wonderful day and happy coding.